Hello again, and welcome to a session of Surgical Pathology, Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and again, our slides today are courtesy of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Association, which is a joint venture with the uh, Digital Pathology Association and uh, Pathology Presenter. We will continue our uh, journey through uh, ovarian pathology. Uh, today, we're looking at a uh, middle-aged woman uh, who has an ovarian mass, several centimeters in size, uh, discovered on a routine exam. No specific symptoms, uh, but uh, a mass of uh, greater than 10 centimeters. Microscopically, we see that this is a uh, fairly uh, firm and solid tumor. Uh, it has a uh, low power, we can see you know, maybe a few clear spaces here, uh, and then maybe some adherent, uh, adherent tissue. But pretty much the entire ovarian parenchyma is replaced by this uh, tumor of both solid and uh, uh, small clear spaces. So let's look uh, first here at the uh, adjacent normal uh, ovarian parenchyma. Uh, we see there's a little bit of accentuation of surface epithelium. And we see a few uh, cystic uh, inclusions here. Uh, these look fairly typical for uh, serous type inclusions. They have the eosinophilic secretions. And I think you can see uh, there even are a few uh, ciliated type cells. So these look more like a serous uh, pattern. Uh, with the surrounding stroma, you might wonder about endometriosis as a possibility. Moving over into the tumor, uh, we see there's a slight difference. Uh, the secretions become a little bit more uh, bluish, uh, more mucinous appearing, and the uh, tubular structures are less uh, surrounded by columnar epithelium and more by um, a more cuboidal uh, epithelium. And looking at high magnification, we see that these uh, cells have a degree of nuclear atypia. Uh, there are some more solid areas, small areas, and then a little bit of this uh, mucinous type secretion. The surrounding stroma uh, is fibrothecomatous. And again, here we see these small nests of uh, cells uh, with a small uh, degree of uh, nuclear atypia. Um, we'll look at this fairly carefully because uh, uh, this is uh, an important feature to identify. Um, with this uh, being a non serous type neoplasm, we want to make sure that. This is not a metastatic carcinoma from uh, a gastric or other source. These don't have the appearance of uh, signet ring cells per se, but that would certainly be in the differential. This could be a well-differentiated adenocarcinoma of gastrointestinal type. Uh, here we see more of these cells and a little bit of atypia. These tend to be sort of flattening out a little bit more uh, as uh, we look at some of these areas. Uh, there is an, uh, a sort of paleness or clear cell uh, change to some of the uh, cytoplasm. And here we see a little bit of an apical nucleus. Um, looking a little bit further, uh, we see again, just a very mild degree of atypia with these um, nuclear uh, features. We'll look around and take another low power view and see if there's another area we'd like to investigate. It's fairly uniform throughout here. Uh, looking again here, uh, again, we see these small tubular glands, uh, fairly pale, clear to, to clear cytoplasm, and a mild degree of nuclear atypia with occasional sort of stromal cells uh, or very small nests or single cells within the stroma. Uh, so we might also wonder about uh, other um, sex cord stromal tumors, uh, Sertoli Leydig tumors possibly, although uh, these tubules don't look uh, too much like a Sertoli type tubules. Uh, luteinized uh, tumors, uh, luteinized stromal tumors would usually not have this sort of a glandular element, although they may have some sex cord like elements. Um, and the degree of atypia seems less than uh, usually seen in carcinoma. 
so looking through here, I think we get a fairly good sense that we have a, a degree of uh, nuclear atypia in some of these cells. We have sort of pale to slightly clear cytoplasm, uh, small cystic spaces amidst the fibrothecomatous uh, background. Now, if we were to do immunohistochemical stains on this, uh, we would see that these cells mark with uh, uh, epithelial markers, keratins, as, as expected, um, and with uh, some of the markers of ovarian origin, uh, CK7. Uh, probably usually would mark with PAX8, although that hasn't been widely reported. Um, and more often than not, they would be NAPS and A positive. Here again, we see the degree of atypia associated here. So um, the diagnosis in this case is of a borderline clear cell adenofibroma. Uh, now this is an unusual uh, tumor, a very uncommon lesion. Not a whole lot have been reported in the literature. Um, it is potentially underrecognized, as you can imagine. Some of these might have been reported as or uh, just viewed as serous tumors. But we could see the difference between the, the serous epithelium, uh, which we have on the periphery of this tumor. For example, right here, we can see these almost back to back. Here, more serous type glands with a, a dense secretion here. And then in contrast, these with a more watery uh, and different component of epithelium. So I think you can be persuaded that it's not a serous neoplasm. Um, we call it borderline based on the presence of uh, some nuclear atypia and occasional solid uh, cell nests. Um, the majority of the reported cases seem to be reported in the borderline ca category, and that may be perhaps out of a degree of caution. Uh, in some circumstances, we can see microinvasion. Uh, that's usually defined as less than one square millimeter of uh, invasion and usually involves a greater degree of atypia and some degree of stromal response. However, because this invasive character can be very focal, it's strongly recommended based on the limited data available that fairly generous sampling of these tumors be conducted to exclude the presence of invasion. The outcome data is somewhat limited. In uh, my colleague Dr. Bell's original uh, report of uh, 18 tumors uh, in the clear cell adenofibroma category, uh, which included a majority of uh, borderline tumors, um, the follow-up information was really pretty good. Um, there were no recurrences in uh, 14 of the 17 patients, uh, most of which, again, were borderline, uh, but some of which were microinvasive. Uh, and one patient uh, had a questionable lung metastasis about four years later. Uh, additionally, one pelvic recurrence was recorded in her series. Now, grossly, these tumors, uh, as you can imagine, uh, tend to be fairly solid appearing. Um, they may have a spongy or sieve-like appearance uh, based on the size of the microcysts. Uh, and occasionally, you can get larger cystic spaces. Um, uh, depending, of course, on the uh, mixture between solid and cystic uh, components. Um, and size can, can be fairly substantial, up to 15, 20 centimeters in size uh, has been reported and uh, would not be inconsistent with this diagnosis. So uh, that, to summarize, is our final sign out for today is a clear cell adenofibroma. Uh, we would term it in the borderline category based on the nuclear atypia and expect that this patient probably will do quite well. So thanks for joining me uh, today uh, in this uh, session of digital sign out. Uh, we'll look forward to uh, more bright days ahead and looking into further uh, instances of ovarian and other aspects of surgical pathology. Uh, look forward to seeing you then.